Good morning. I'm Cindy from DIY Beautify. Welcome to my channel. I would love it if you chose to subscribe by hitting that button below. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pom-pom pillow, but more specifically, we're going to go over how to make pom-poms using this pom-pom maker. I found this on Amazon. It's it's like seven or eight dollars and you can see that it comes with four different sizes for making pom-poms. Now I've done a lot of pom-poms before and I've never used a pom-pom maker so this was new to me and honestly I was very frustrated with it when I first started to use it because it doesn't come with very good instructions. So if you have one of these at home and you never use it because you can't figure it out I'm going to show you how to use it today. And even though the pillow that we're going to make is made with this cotton pink yarn, for the purposes of just time, I'm going to show you how to make the pom-pom using this black thicker yarn. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, actually better, better tilt this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. First thing you're going to see is the pom-pom maker is kind of like a circle. And... It has these little feet that open up like that and then the opposite one opens up like that. Now you want to flatten it and what we're going to do is we're going to cover each of these sides. The first time I made it I actually covered just one and that obviously didn't work and I had to take it all apart and start over. So we're going to wrap our yarn around one of these close it up, then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, close it up, and then we're going to finish the pom-pom pom -pom from there. Now the thing to, to remember if you want to have your pom-poms all the same size is that you need to sort of count how many times you're wrapping the yarn around. I found that when I didn't do that my pom-poms ended up different sizes and it was just frustrating. Okay, so we're going to take our yarn and I've seen some people pop it into these little, these little grooves on the end. I found it easiest just to hold it with my finger while I got started. You do want to keep this, it's a little finicky, you do want to hold this so that you see how the one foot wants to pop down. Okay, so you want to hold it so that that doesn't happen. And then you start wrapping and you, you want to just cover it. Now I did find too that if I started to overlap my thread at this point, my pom-poms looked a little goofy. You want to keep it tight, keep your yarn tight as you go around. Okay, so I have lost count of how many times I've wrapped it but I'm gonna say it's about 10. And I found for this size of a pom-pom maker that I was getting success with wrapping it about 75 times. So that is 25. I'm going to go ahead and keep wrapping. You're going to wrap all the way this way like I've done. Then you're going to go all the way back and just keep going about 25 times with the thread that I'm using. You may need to experiment and do it a little bit differently, but let's just get this thing covered. Okay, so that is 75 times. I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm going to close this side up. Okay, now we're gonna do the very same thing on this other side. And you definitely want to wrap your pom-pom the exact same number of times because that will give you an even pom-pom. Okay, cut it off, close it up. 
Now this is the part that is actually really fun about this, these pom-pom makers. And if you're just getting started, I would suggest you use one of the bigger sizes. There's a pink one and a green one. Obviously, you're gonna need a lot more yarn to make a full pom-pom, but it may just help you with figuring out how this thing works. It did take me two or three pom-poms before I felt comfortable. So, see this little line? That actually goes all the way through. Remember, we covered that up. Now we wanna stick our scissors into that little separation and we're gonna cut our pom-poms apart on this side and then come and cut them through on this side. You just wanna hold the pom-pom maker steady while you're snipping. And you wanna have some sharp scissors to do this. See that little groove that just continues all the way around? I'm sticking my scissors in there. These actually aren't the best scissors, but we'll get it done. If you have a lot of layers, it can be a little tough. Okay, I'm gonna have to go get another pair of scissors. I apologize for that. All right, these kitchen shears are gonna do a better job for me. They're much sharper. And you can see they're cutting through all those layers. Okay, so when you get to the end of one side, you can see that all of those, it's completely snipped through. We're just gonna stick our scissors back in that groove and cut the other side. All right, so it's cut through completely all the way across. Don't worry about these. These were our little starts and ends. So now what you wanna do is cut about a 10 inch length of your yarn and you want to stick it in that groove and you're going to wrap the yarn in that groove all the way around. Now this is what holds our pom-pom together and keeps it from falling apart. So I like to make sure that my ends are pretty even. Okay, now we're going to tie this. And you don't want to pull so tight that you break your yarn, but you do want to pull it snug. That's just holding all your threads together in the center of the pom-pom. All right, so I've pulled it tight. Now I'm gonna wrap it around to the other side and do the very same thing, only this time I'm going to pull it or tie it twice. That's going to knot. Okay, so again, you pull it really tight and one more time to knot it so that it they don't all just fall apart. Okay, so now what we can do is we can open up these sides. So just grab those and open them up. You can see half our pom-pom there. Do the same with the other side. And then you actually have to physically separate these two pieces. So you pull them apart. You can see that they're just a little hole and a little, I don't know, pointy thing. <laughs> that goes inside there. Okay, and hold on to your two strings that you tied around it and just give it a little shake. Now we can give our pom-pom a trim because there are those pieces that are sticking out from earlier. And you can just give it a little haircut so that it is more rounded. All right. And there you have it. So that is how you use this pom-pom maker. And then when you're ready to make a new one, you pop this back together and you can start over again. You wanna make sure that this creamy part in the middle is straight and you can start making a new pom-pom. So I'm gonna pop this to the side 
and pick up my shavings. And I'm just gonna come back up here for a minute. Now I made 10 pink pom-poms using, that might be a little too, I used a cotton yarn. This is the kind of yarn that you would use if you know your grandma made those knitted dish cloths, dish cloths that you wash your dishes with, wash cloths. That's what that yarn is. The trick with it is that because it's real thin, <clears throat> It takes a lot more yarn and your pom-poms here's the black one I made you can see <clears throat> it's just really fluffy it looks really full here's a pink one you can see the difference you can see the imperfections of this one it's much more difficult to get a round pom-pom shape but I'm gonna go with it because I loved this color it worked with all of my winter and valentine's decor that i was using this year so now we're going to actually make the pillow and i found this pillow cover over at hobby lobby uh the brand i forget what it was called it's just a plain pillow cover it's the size is 20 inches i believe it might be 18 but i'll link to it below it's got a zipper at the back which is really handy and now if I lived in, close to an Ikea I love their pillow covers they're about the same price maybe a buck or two more but they're a much nicer cotton this is a little bit stiff I've washed it and I've dried it I'm gonna heat up my glue gun bear with me for a second and I'm using just a piece of cardboard to stick into my pillow cover because I'm gonna hot glue these pom-poms to the front. And I don't wanna stick the two sides of my pillow cover together because that would be a disaster after all the work I did making all those pom-poms. It's not quite exactly the same size as my pillow cover. It's a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to move it around as I attach my pom-poms. And Flip my phone again now I made 10 pink pom-poms and I was going to do rows of four but then I would have needed 12 pom-poms and I decided that I didn't want to do that many I was getting tired of making them so I'm just gonna space out my 12 or my 10 and I found that if I did a row of three actually three going this way and then two and then three again and then two that it made this pretty pattern so we're just gonna hot glue these pom-poms now all of these pink ones have had a little trim they're still not perfectly round because like I was saying, that cotton thread is just a little bit more tricky. But what I'm doing is just kind of fluffing them up and finding the best side. And then I'm gonna put that side down and that's the side I'm gonna glue it on. So just give them a little fluff. If you need to give it a little haircut again, that's fine. You can do that and you'll find that there's one side that just like this one obviously that's going to be the bottom because it just doesn't look that great it's like a natural indentation in the pom-pom this one needs a little piece cut off sticking out so now i considered um sewing my pom-poms to my pillow cover but in the end I just decided that hot glue was the way to go so I'm gonna start with I just want to make sure they're evenly spaced so my cardboard is up in this area so I'm gonna do these five pom-poms first okay let's see if my glue is hot I think it is. I'm just gonna grab a little napkin to rest it on. And 
I'm not actually sure how much glue it's going to take. So I squeezed out three heavy drops and I'm just pressing my pom-pom to hold it. And I think it's stuck to the cardboard, but that's easy to pull off. Can you see that? Let's go back a little further. So this one is glued down. Now your pom-poms are gonna lose their shape a little bit when you press them to hold that glue, but that's okay. You can just fluff them up again. Okay, so I'm gonna press and hold for about 10 seconds. And then I just wanna make sure that I'm releasing it from that piece of cardboard underneath because as it continues to cool, if it's stuck there, it's gonna be hard to get unstuck. All right, so let's move on to this guy. So I'm finding that three squeezes of my glue is doing the trick. I don't wanna over glue them because I don't wanna have a bunch of glue oozing out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish gluing these pom-poms on and then we'll stick a pillow inside. So you can see my pom-poms are sticking really nicely and my pillow cover is done. I'm going to go ahead and put an insert inside and here is my designer tip for pillow inserts. I like feather inserts because they're much uh, fuller. They provide just a squishier pillow that you can adjust and they don't tend to go flat. I like to buy when Marshalls or Home Goods has their pillow pillows on clearance, I always look for the down ones and I usually can buy a pillow for about $9. I just take off the outside cover, unless of course I love it, but I, I don't care what the cover looks like. I just look for the insert. And I tend to buy an insert that's a little bit larger than my pillow case. Um, and what that does is it just makes a really nice full pillow with all the corners filled out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff it and then we'll style it in my home. very big pillow. You want to make sure that your corners are stuffed completely. And the easiest way is to just to get your hand in there, feel the pillow, push it into the corner, and even hold it there for a minute while you give your pillow a little shake. Okay, we're going to zip them up. is that I made this pillow for around ten dollars and I love that it's not um, perfect like the pom-poms are a little bit shaggy but I think it's gonna look really cute in my decor and I'm gonna go style it and show you <laughs> 